Hello everyone and welcome to Friday Live. I'm super excited to be here with you again this week. So my name is Ashley Hay. I'm an artist and I'm the importer of Powertex for Australia. And um, I love using Powertex in my artwork. And so, of course, um, for the last couple of weeks, we've been focusing on transparent. So today we're going to look at how you can create incredible layers in your artwork with transparent Powertex. So if you are here, just um, we are live. So if you pop in and um, say hello, it would be lovely to hear from everyone. And um, of course, I'm going to do a little bit of a demonstration today using um, transparent and uh, we're going to paint and play and have some fun and hopefully inspire you for the weekend and get you over some of that um, blank canvas um, sort of worry I guess <laughs> so we'll take you beyond beyond the blank canvas to creating incredible art surfaces today. So um, I, if you haven't joined me before um, and you're joining for the first time, welcome. And if you haven't heard of Powertex, you are in for a treat and we are going to have a lot of fun. So let's get started. So Natalie's here from Bag In Studios. Hey, Nat, lovely to see you and um, we'll get cracking. Robin's here as well. Um, so yes, welcome everyone. So remember that if you do have questions as I go, if I don't see it or don't notice, that's okay. I'm probably in creative zone and, um, but I will try and keep an eye on those questions so that I can answer them uh, live for you because of course that's what I'm here to do. So um, as you know, I love Powtex and I've been working with it for well over 10 years now and um, I'm still excited about the possibilities of the medium. So let's have a look at what's possible and I'll do a quick recap of what we've done for the last couple of weeks. So uh, for the first time we're live streaming to YouTube today as well as to Facebook. So super excited, yay! Um, so welcome to YouTubers. Um, okay, let's get cracking and um, I'll pop down and show you what's on my art table. So we'll just have a look there. And so you can see here, this is what we actually worked on last week. So last week we were looking at um, how to use transparent Powertex and actually add different mediums into the transparent Powertex and um, really play around. So, of course, if you have missed that one, you can watch, <coughs> oh, excuse me, you can watch the replay from last week. And so what I show in that is I show how you can mix acrylic paints, acrylic inks, uh, pigments, anything that you've got in with your um, Powertex and um, do some incredible layers and just have lots of fun. So it's all about playing, exploring and discovery is the name of the game. So if you... Um, have an idea, just try it out and you'll be amazed at what you can do with this incredible medium. Alrighty, so um, welcome, welcome. So everyone's popping in now and um, that's wonderful. All right, so um, we're going to be looking at transparent layers and I'll show you the whole table and we'll get going. So, of course, this is... Um, you know, like I say, if you missed that, just go and have a recap from last week. It was super playful and super fun to do. Um, and this week, again, we're going to explore, discover and play as well. So while I was working last week, um, as I was scraping some elements off, I was working on a second um, surface as well. And so quite often I will do this where I've got you know, spare uh, paint and I work onto a second canvas and develop another idea. And of course, these create wonderful uh, surfaces that I can then do more with um, later if I choose. Okay, just, okay, so, um, so what we're going to take a look at today is we're going to take a look at how you can actually add 
transparent power text on to your artwork um, once you've created some surfaces and then how you can actually extend that artwork. So I'm going to be taking a look at a range of things. So let's um, have a look first of all at making some marks with um, just the power text and really just drawing with it. So pop back down here again and there's the blank table and uh, I've got a massive canvas here. I didn't practice putting that one on. Ah, okay. <laughs> so with this one, I have actually drawn um, marks using the transparent and then I have just used red, um, red dust from the earth in Australia. So quite often when I'm doing my artwork, I like to work with the elements that are from the environment. Um, so especially with my own artwork, it's always um, around a, creating a sense of place and a sense of space. And so this is something I quite like to do. So all I have done is I've simply put the transparent power text into a squeeze bottle and then I've used that squeeze bottle to actually draw in and onto my artwork. So something like that. So of course, we're using um, the transparent power text. Um, now, the great thing about the power text is if you haven't used it before, is it really hardens um, textures and different surfaces. And so you can use it as a glue, like I'm doing here, where I'm essentially just drawing with the, with the power text. So if you haven't tried that before, have a play with that this weekend because it is super, super fun. And then, of course, I can put other surfaces and things into here. So let's take a look at some of the uh, oops, some of the materials that I use for that. And so I've got a range of different things here. And so laundry scoops are gold. So they're really great for just dispensing things onto your artwork. So start collecting those. And you can see I've just got some sort of um, gravel from uh, our Australian gravel and some yellow sand and then some more beachy sand. And this one's more like a bitumen road base that has been silvered up. So um, those of you who saw my artwork from last week, this was actually something that I have used in that. And simply using the transparent to glue the surfaces down. So super exciting. Now, Let's just have a have a little bit of a crazy play. So I'll get rid of those ones from last week and pull out a surface. So this is a surface that I've already done. So this is where your transparent power text is really nice because you can allow some of the under layers of the um, colours and surfaces that you've already done to actually come through. The transparent is going to dry clear on your artwork and of course, it is going to also harden fibres and fabrics. So if you've got coloured fibres and fabrics, or if you've got pre-painted um, canvas, which is what this is. So I've got some canvas elements there. And if you've got some of that, you can then, of course, you know, cut up elements of drawings and you can actually, um, you know, paste those on with the with the power checks so that you um, you know create create a secondary layer onto your artwork like that. So to paste those on you just simply use your power checks um, on the back of the piece and then uh, stick it down and then I do like to paint over the top. And of course we can also draw back into it. So let's have just a little play with what we can do. Now, I have got this smaller bottle here. I've got some, just get that down into this. Just give it a little bit of a shake. Put some water in it from when I cleaned it. And then we can just literally take a bit of drawing onto that surface. 
and depending on what you want to do. So, of course, I'm just being a little bit playful with that and not very thinking about it because I'm doing the demo. Um, and then I can get some of these um, colours that I've got now. I might actually use the red dust because the red dust is going to really contrast well. It's not so dusty. I might use the yellow sand, actually. And then I just sprinkle that onto there. So that is um, what I had done on that other artwork. So you can see that it's just a case of um, playing around and mucking about with it. And it's good to have something to catch your, catch your mess onto. So we'll just catch it onto the ice cream plate here. And there we have it. So um, I'll just pop a little bit more on there. Now, if there's any that's adhered anywhere where you don't particularly want it, so I must have had a little bit of water on, on there, um, you can just remove that or you can let it dry and then dust it off later. And then, of course, you can take, like, different colours onto it as well. So we'll just go over there. And we can take this one. Now, there is some wonderful um, texture products available in the Powtex range as well. And one of those is actually the 3D sand and balls. And when I first got those, I thought, well, you know, what am I ever going to do with those? You know, I can get this sort of stuff where I can go and pick it up you know, off the side of the road or off the beach and actually pick up some sand and things like that. And then one day I went, you know what, I'm going to try these sand and balls because they are so popular. And what I found was I found that with the sand and balls, the sand is actually more like a pumice. So I'm going to show you that. So let's just tip that off. All right. So now you can see that I'm getting you know, multiple colours on there. And, of course, I can play with any colours I like. I don't have to put it down with a squeeze bottle. I could also just um, put it down with a palette knife so I get a more filled area. So, for example, on that piece that I showed you before, um, you know, if I, I could actually fill in some of the segments with other colours or with paint, uh, now that I've actually drawn onto the canvas and create more layers. Okay, we have got a question. Um, are those trees leather? So from before? No, they're simply uh, canvas. So they've been done with canvas and they've just been painted and then, um, yeah, just cut out. So to cut those out, I simply drew on the back of the canvas and then I just use some scissors and cut them out. So I haven't done that very carefully. If I did it more carefully, um, then it would even look better. I could even cut it out and then I could paint onto the canvas. And that way I wouldn't have these, um, see how there's a little bit of white edges on there. Um, so I would not have those, but I just did that quickly. Alrighty, yes, it does look like fun. And so that's Natalie is saying, hey, this looks like it's good fun. And yes, super, super, super cool um, and lots of fun to play with. Okay, so that is with that. Now let's take a look at the 3D sand and balls. So the 3D sand and balls, there are, th there are four different sizes of um, these in the range. So you've got the 3D sand, which, like I say, is actually almost like a pumice. So I'll just open that up and show you. And these, um, these little dishes are filled with the sample pack. So you can actually get a sample pack from Powtex, which gives you the four different things. And so you can try it that way, find out which one is your favourite, and then um, go from there. So, um, yeah, so let's, we're going to use this one. And then you've got also, you've got small, so I don't know if you can see those, 
but they're almost like a seed bead. And then you've got medium and large balls as well. Now, the great thing that I love about these compared with, say, using something like a natural stone is that the 3D, the balls actually will pick up the colour. And so it's really, really, really lovely to use. All right, let's have a look at the difference in the colour that this makes. And we'll just go in between here because we can. We might as well. And um, I might take almost like some wave bits in here. Get my scoop. And I can actually pop that onto there. And it's only going to adhere to the part that's wet different tool so you just find what tools you like to use these are super um, super cool and of course I could also use um, actual more like beach sand as well which would give me a different color if you got the really white sand and so you can play with lots of found materials and um, just create layers Okay, um, this is the sand and balls, and so we'll pop some of those on this area over here. And I can actually put the big ones on as well if I like. It's just going to give me more texture. Now, what I like to do to really get this to adhere is I like to get the canvas and then just tap underneath it and see how those, I don't know if you can see that, but they see how they're all bouncing around there. And what happens is because you're bouncing that canvas around, it's all adhering to, um, to those bits of the wet power techs in the transparent. Okay, and then I shall collect those. What else have I got over here that I can tip onto so that I can keep it separate? And the great thing with this is that I can actually, so the great thing with this is that I can actually pick up um, and recycle any of those materials that I'm using. So um, yes, use them and then recycle them and repurpose them and use them again. So especially when you're doing um, mixed media and you're playing around with different uh, elements. So you can see I've got most of that off, but if I um, played around, then uh, I could take it off properly. But I can let that dry and then I can actually clean up the canvas as well. So it's really nice to allow the... Um, to allow the colours to actually come through and, um, you know, really uh, start creating and playing with those layers. Now, the other thing that you can do, of course, is like I was talking about before. So you might have like a surface where, um, you know, you just the trick is to have some sort of underlying surface and I could put a light colour of, texture up here and then I can actually take those tree shapes and uh, stick them down. I can play with other layers then on top of that and I can also play with putting the, um, I'll turn that around so you can see it the other way. Um, so I can then play as well with putting transparent power techs on some of these areas, a bit like what I did last week, and just keep playing and pushing and pulling the elements and really uh, just, you know, not worrying. And so if you, if you get, um, if you're stuck to get started, it's really nice just to create a beautiful surface 
and then just start playing with some of these elements. I could also use these to mask off areas. So I could do something in these areas and then pull it off and then I would have the underneath area with the um, actual print as well. So, um, all right, so as well as that, the other great medium, I should probably throw this on because we can just get rid of some of that and get a little bit of Powtex. Out. And uh, I can just paint that onto my canvas piece here, I'm making a really lovely mess. I do tend to do that. <laughs> And I'm just going to pop him on there and then paint the back. There we go. So you get the idea. So you can, um, you know, use the transparent Powtex like a glue. Where it really comes into its own is when you start playing with, um, so I could actually, like I said before, I could actually use that and then tip even, you know, onto, onto that wet area there. So just being playful and taking some of that stuff that we've already got there. And see how I've just got sort of some excess on there. So then I can um, turn it upside down, never mind. Pop that one on there. And then where are my trees? So I can do the same with these. So I can get sort of this shadow effect with the sand. So we'll just let it overlap and you can see I'm not being that careful. So if you actually have a plan and do this carefully, it can be absolutely fabulous. And then we'll get that on there. Onto there. Now, because I have got that sand, um, I might just need a little bit more Powtex to get it to adhere. And of course, I could also let that first layer of sand dry, which would be a lot better, and then um, paint the Powtex onto the piece that I want to join and then all of this sort of shadowed area in the background is going to be dry. So it's just really about playing and just having some fun with the with the medium and you know not stressing, just try different things out and just have some fun and be playful. And I really, really, really encourage you to do that because um, sometimes we can get so uptight when we're creating, but you know, it's about enjoying the journey and it's really about expressing ourselves, how we're feeling, and um, as well as, you know, obviously in this particular piece, um, it's also uh, a, a little bit of a landscape and um, moving uh, into that sort of um, <laughs> that sort of idea of, of that. So um, yeah, I would just keep playing with that until I resolve some of it and I can just pop my Powtex layer on top of there and it will dry clear. 
The other nice thing is that I'm going to get a bit of a sheen on that um, layer of canvas, which is going to look really nice. And I can just pop that in. Probably not put it exactly where I wanted it, but that's okay. See that's sticking already? This one I might just move up a little bit. So he's sort of touching the top edge there. Okay. And then I can just keep playing uh, with those surfaces. All right. Another fabulous way, um, as well as your sands and your earths and things like that, another wonderful thing to actually use, <laughs> just trying to get hold of it here, um, is sort of other natural materials. So the great thing with your transparent, it is going to dry clear. And so you can add things like beautiful barks onto your work. So you imagine adding elements of that beautiful colour and texture onto, you know, some of your mixed media pieces. You can cut out um, this paper bark and it, the Powtex will actually harden and um, keep the colour and keep it in place on your piece. So keep a lookout for natural textures and things that you love. Gum nuts are also, uh, what have I got in here? I've got some gum nuts there. Um, so they are fabulous to use, especially if you're doing sculptural elements. I must say I do like to use the bronze power techs on those and then colour them up. But if you want to keep the natural colour, then you would use the transparent. Uh, these elements are absolutely gorgeous. I can't wait to do a piece with these. So I don't know if you can see that. I'm just going to hold it up a little bit more. So see how um, beautiful those colours are there. So they're actually off a grass tree, just collected um, from the base of a grass tree and they are gorgeous. So I would put them onto my artwork with a bit of stone art and so I will probably show you that at some point and then I would probably use um, like the actual tree resin to actually fix it onto my artwork just because I can mix it up and have some fun. Um, so Natalie's just saying that she always collects nuts when she's over in WA. Yes, we have some wonderful um, natural things here. Uh, let me show you these as well. These make brilliant scales. Um, so they're like these little um, nutty things. So if you are making animals, they're quite nice to use. The other thing that I will also use with my transparent power text to keep the colour is the coloured potpourri that you get. And that is absolutely gorgeous to work with. So Michelle's just saying um, that she loves canvas, the canvas cutouts. Yeah, it's a bit of fun. And then you can also, you know, do things in these negative spaces later on. So you can really play and muck around with that and um, have a bit of fun. Now, the other fabulous thing to work with with the transparent power text, which is just an awesome medium. So I'm showing you a whole heap of stuff today, but um, I hope you're excited and that you just have a play. Uh, <laughs> Robin's just saying, yes, we have lots of nuts in WA um, and uh, yeah, we're all nuts here. So <laughs> ah, hilarious. Okay. So um, just with uh, what was I going to say? Oh, the Power Wax. The Power Wax is an awesome medium and um, it is absolutely wonderful to work with the um, transparent power text. So what I, I will show you an example of an art piece that I've done and I could actually, once this has dried off, I could actually um, work in to some of these little windows with the wax and with some colours or with um, just transparent. Now, let me show you an example of where I've used the transparent and the wax. And the great thing with the wax is that the wax acts like a binder. So um, not the wax, 
working with the wax, the power wax and the transparent, the transparent power text acts like a binder and you will get this clear sort of encaustic look on your artwork, which is just absolutely gorgeous. So I'll hold that up there and just so that you can see that a little bit better. And so um, the great thing with the Power Wax, and I have done a live previously on this, so you can track back and have a look, um, but I might have to do another one at some stage, is you just use, use the wax. It is a water-based uh, wax that so works with any water-based art medium. So you can use it with your acrylic paints, your acrylic inks, but you do need to add a binder into it, for example, like transparent Powertex or an acrylic gloss medium or an acrylic gel medium. Something needs to bind the wax. So, um, but it is fabulous to play with. And if you love working with water-based mediums, then the Power Wax is just absolutely brilliant. So um, Donna's just saying, oh, there's so much to learn. And absolutely, there is heaps to learn, Donna. But you know what? Um, the great thing is that you can just paint and play and have some fun. And really, at the end of the day, what I really want to encourage you guys to do is to really experiment and try different things out. And so the transparent Powertex, I guess I'm doing a little bit of a feature on the different um, colours and what the colours will do for you over the next few weeks. I have had a request on that. So we'll look at um, another one of the colours next week and see, um, you know, what you can do with some of the colours. So that's the plan. However, having said that, next week I am on my way to beautiful Ningaloo Reef in WA and we're heading up to the Coral Reef to do some snorkelling, but I'm hoping that I can get my live in first. Um, if not, I'll be live on the road and bringing you something arty on the way up. So, <laughs> so yes, next the next couple of weeks might be um, a little bit... Um, touch and go especially once I'm up upper coral bay I'm hoping that I've got some coverage so that I can live stream from up there as well all righty so if anyone's got any questions I mean what we've done today is actually really very very simple and it's just really playing with um, the Powertex and really, you know, painting with the transparent and adding things to it and really uh, just playing and mucking around. So don't forget that if you do have any um, questions or anything, you can join the Creative Hub and that's on Facebook and we can, we actually are very, very happy to help you out with anything that you're stuck with or if you just need a bit of feedback on an artwork where you don't know what to do. And, of course, um, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel and then you'll be able to find things easily. So there's a whole lot more content now coming to YouTube and I will be sharing things there. So for people who aren't on Facebook, they'll be able to watch and you should be able to find things easily. All right. And of course, as always, you can also um, learn more about Powertex at the Powertex website. And if you are in Australia, find a trainer near you and do a workshop because you just learn so much when you go to a Powertex workshop, it will just accelerate your understanding of how to use the art medium. And um, all our certified Powertex trainers are absolutely wonderful people and they have loads of knowledge to share with you. So find a Powertex trainer near you and um, get some supplies and work at home and paint and play or um, do a workshop with someone. Alrighty, until next week, everyone, thank you so much for joining me again. I do appreciate it. And I hope that I've inspired you just to pull out and get crazy, get crazy with your artwork on your canvas and paint and play and enjoy the process and don't stress too much. Just let loose and see what happens. And sometimes through that playful, intuitive approach to your artwork, you will come up with some surprising results. 
quite often as well, I have to write a few notes on the back of my canvas because sometimes I do something that I go, oh my gosh, look at that, it looks amazing. And um, I really like to, um, <laughs> I really like to uh, get that happening. Anyway, for now and until next week, I'll see you all. Go crazy creating, have lots of fun, enjoy. Ciao.